Welcome to Leadoff Man, brought to you by Heinz Lumber. Your money goes further when you go to Heinz. This is Steve Stone with the Leadoff Man. Right now we're going to go down to the field and pick up opening day ceremonies right after this message. Down on the field, the Cubs' own Jack Brickhouse is introducing the opening day lineup. Now the remainder of the 1984 Cubs. The pitcher, 33, Porphy Altamirano. 42, Rich Bordy. 41, Warren Brewster. 48, Dickie Knowles. Number 30, Chuck Rainey, number 47, Rick Russell. There's Rick. Number 44, Dick Ruthven. 24, Scott Sanderson. 46, Lee Smith. 49, Tim Stoddard. Catcher, number 16, Steve Lake. Infielders, 22, Bill Buckner. Richie Hebner. Number 18, Richie Hebner. Number 29, Tom Verizer. Outfielders. Number 28, Henry Cotto. Number 21, Jay Johnstone. Number 6, Keith Moreland. Oh boy. Number 25, Gary Woods and the Chicago Cubs coaching staff. Number five, Ruben Amaro. Number three, Billy Connors. Number nine, Johnny Oates. Number two, John Bukovich. Number four, Don Zimmer. The fitness coach, Paul Zaris. The Cubs trainer, Tony Garofalo. Ladies and gentlemen, our 1984 Chicago Cubs. It would appear that the game is going to be held up just a little bit. The reason is the starting pitchers have not come out to throw anything yet. It usually takes them between 15 and 18 minutes to warm up. So with the threat of rain here at Wrigley Field, it looks like the opening day pitches were going to be held up just a little bit. The Cubs will have their hands full today. They're facing a very young but very hot Mets ball club. The Mets have won six in a row, equaling their best start ever. They've got a kitty core and the pitching staff. The guy we're going to see today, Dwight Gooden, is rated as one of the best young pitchers to come into the league. There you can see some fans getting in out of the rain. It was predicted. We thought it might hold off just a little bit, and we felt we could get this one in on time. It appears that that's not going to be the case. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and join us in the singing of our national anthem. 
And with us today to perform the anthem is the performer from the hit musical Dream Girls, appearing now through July 1st at the Schubert Theater and playing the role of Effie White in Dream Girls. Please welcome Lilius White. this time out. The Mets seem to be doing it the right way. They've gone to the youth. They've got a very young pitching staff. When Tom Seaver was taken in the offseason, the Mets decided to go with young starters, and we're going to see a 19-year-old fireballer tonight and a 21-year-old catcher. So the, the battery certainly is young enough. They've got the tools, and the Mets are hoping the young pitching comes through. Dwight Gooden, 300 strikeouts last year in 191 innings. You know he's got the good fastball. His control is supposed to be excellent. And Jim Fry said he's never seen a better young pitcher come into the league. The catcher had his cheek fractured in spring training. He had won the starting job, and it didn't look like he was going to be able to perform, but he's back in there. John Gibbons behind the plate. So the Mets certainly have enough young talent. And there is the coach, Ray Meyer, in the dugout, trying to get the Cubs suck, psyched up for this one. He looks pretty good in that Cub uniform. We'll be back with the opening of the ball game, so stay tuned for baseball. It's time for baseball. From Wrigley Field in Chicago, the Chicago Cubs and their home opener facing the New York Mets. Hello again, everybody. With Steve Stone, Harry Carey at Wrigley Field and the 1984 season at home for our Chicago Cubs is about to start. The weatherman has not cooperated uh, perfectly, but there will be baseball. The field is covered at the moment. The air is one of drama and excitement. And boy, I tell you, there is nothing like the opening of a new baseball season. Everybody's excited here, Harry, and the Cubs are excited because they're going to look at this fine young pitcher we've been talking about, Dwight Gooden. But the whole Mets ball club has a different character. They've done it, as you said, by bringing up their young players. It should be interesting. We're going to see some guys we really haven't seen so far. You know, a lot of the uh, traditionalists of baseball will say that they're rushing their youngsters uh, too much. But uh, this is the other school, and there's always uh, two different kinds of uh, uh, pieces of thinking about how you develop a ball club. Some people think you get the best you have in your organization. You know you're not going anywhere anyway, so you put them out there and let them sink or swim with the idea that they'll improve with experience and that suddenly you'll find yourself with a good ball club. Others think that you develop them at the minor league level and you only bring them up well, once they have reached a certain uh, state of excellence. I don't know which uh, system is right, but I know which is the most interesting, and the New York Mets have it. They got a bunch of kids in their lineup. They got a 19-year-old boy pitching. 
His name is Dwight Gooden, and everybody in baseball is raving about him. They got a young catcher, a young third baseman, a young but brilliant center fielder, the rookie of the year in Strawberry. They have one, two veterans in Hernandez and Foster right in the center of their by, uh, batting order, and youngsters at the top. So it's a team of youth, and I know it was going to be exciting for the New York fans. On the other hand, the Chicago Cubs have a note of excitement about them, too. They have different ball players, but more established ball players. And they've improved at the level where they can keep guys like Moreland and Buckner on the bench as you start uh, a new season. There's Coach Ray Meyer of DePaul who's going to throw out the first ball in your background. It's, uh, I think, it was uh, very, very pertinent that the man who got the biggest ovation as the Cubs were introduced was the man who's not starting the game today, Bill Buckner. And Harry, that seems to be a problem because you've got Leon Durham and Bill Buckner both buying at first base. So you've got two full-time ball players each splitting a position. That's not going to do either of them any good, but you've got to play Leon Durham every day. He's a guy who's got to be here for 10 years. can certainly put some offensive numbers on the board, but I don't think he can put them on the board if he platoons at first base. So that leaves you with Bill Buckner on the bench. He's not too happy about it. And the right field situation is unsettled. You've got Mel Hall and Keith Moreland. They're splitting a position. It doesn't make either of them want to throw a party. I think they can be used effectively if they can possibly accept that. We'll just have to see how the season goes on. Well, the matter of acceptance comes to the, to the power and strength of management. There is no, uh, uh, the positive of what Steve has been talking about and wasn't mentioned is the fact that when you have guys like Buckner or Moreland or Hall or Durham who are not playing in the starting lineup, that means that they're available on the bench for a game situation. And therefore, your chances of delivering in those kind of spots are much enhanced over what they normally are when players of not quite that good an ability are sent up in those uh, situations. So there's a lot of, a lot of pros and cons. Uh, it's going to make for a lot of pressure on the manager of the Cubs, but I think he can handle it. It's a good sign, Harry, because now both pitchers have started to loosen up in the bullpens. They're going to need between 15 and 18 minutes, but I like to see them loosening up. It means at least that there's a little bit of break in the weather, and it looks like we're going to get this one in. You know, Steve, everybody talks, and you being a pitcher uh, and pitching uh, admittedly 80 or 90 percent of the game in the minds of various people, everybody talks about the uh, pitching of the cup. Sure, there's a little question mark, and there is about every team in baseball, with the exception of the starting alignment of the Chicago White Sox, and even they aren't too happy with the second line pitching. So nobody's got an overabundance of pitching, even the White Sox, admittedly, with the best five starters. But to me, the key to the Cubs is not the pitching, it's the hitting. If the middle of the batting order can hit in the game situations in which they always seem to come up, then the pitching is going to be good enough. But if your big hitters don't produce, then your pitching isn't going to be good enough. And normally, nobody's pitching is good enough if they have to pitch a shutout or a one-run game every outing in order to win. Well, I think, Harry, that the team has shown in the past couple of years that they can put some runs on the board. With Gary Matthews this year on the ball club, additionally, and Dernier and Cotto looking like they can do some things with the bat, I don't think that the offense is going to be a problem. They're starting slow, certainly, but they're going to score some runs. If we can score four or five a game, we should be able to do pretty well. Yeah, but Steve, uh, 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 the inevitability of a man's background and his average, which is proven at the end of the season, with his uh, uh, norm and stats doesn't really tell the story either. Last year, for example, our big hitters didn't hit in the opening part of the season. And that's why the Cubs got away to such a terrible start. So what good have you produced in the late part if you're out of the race by mid-July? Here is Ray Meyer, the great coach, who's announced his retirement, being escorted by two of the lovelies of the Cubs, they have eight pretty girls now joining Marla Collins. And there you see a couple of them escorting Coach Meyer out. Listen to the hand he's getting. What a thrilling ovation.
He threw it all the way to the plate. I see some pitchers in midseason who couldn't do that. He's enjoying himself here. He's having one of the times of his life, and the fans here in Chicago certainly appreciate Ray Meyer. And I think the fans in Chicago are going to appreciate the beauty that surrounds Wrigley Field over and beyond the ivy on the wall. <laughs> we will be back now with the starting lineups and the exciting play-by-play -play following this message. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey and Steve Stone. The managers, Dave Johnson, who is a team, a great second baseman with Baltimore, is the manager of the Mets, and Jim Fry of the Cubs, the four umpires are Billy Williams behind the plate, Dick Stello at first, Tom McSherry at second, Fred Brook, uh, Brook, Brocklander at third, and there you see the ground rules being discussed. Was uh, Davey Johnson there with Baltimore when you were there, Steve? No, he had already gone, but everybody talked about him being a pretty good leader, Harry. He knew how to play the game. And he brings that style to the Mets. He's got an interesting task, though, because he hasn't been able to manage this club the way you would a club with veterans. He's been a lot more patient. He hasn't really stressed the fundamentals exceptionally hard. Dick Tidrow told me that he's kind of laid off a little bit, stayed back, and waited to see if the youngsters would make mistakes, then gently correct them. He didn't want to intimidate them early in the season. So thus far, everybody says he's doing a nice job. Well, another thing he's got in his favor, though, he managed the AAA Farm Club of the Mets last year. So he's more than just a casual speaking acquaintance to these youngsters. And uh, they must feel at home with their manager from the minor leagues being their manager in the big league. He's also got a brilliant opportunity with New York, Harry, because they're not supposed to win. Everybody picks him for fifth or sixth. So he goes in with relatively little pressure. And he's got a few established players who give him some pop in the middle of the lineup, Hernandez, Foster, and Strawberry. But these young kids are going to be interesting to watch. You know, Steve, I know, and I don't say this for home consumption at all. To me, the two teams in the National League East, who I believe are going to be the biggest surprises and maybe a shocking winner of the division before it's all over, are these two teams that are facing each other. And the reason I say that is because I think the uh, perennially powers of the league have not improved. To the contrary, I think they're not as good as they were, either through advancing age or because of losses through trades. I think the only teams that have improved, are, to any degree at all, are the Mets and the Cubs. I look for them, therefore, in a division that anybody could win to be a tremendous factor and maybe a shocking winner. I think they definitely have a good shot at it as you take a look at 19-year-old Dwight Gooden the interesting thing about the Mets spring training was they brought an ex-Dodger phenom, Sid Fernandez, to spring training. He threw left-handed, and they expected him to make the rotation. As it turned out, he didn't. And they went with Ron Darling. They went with Dwight Gooden. They've got a man named Walt Terrell, who was off to a 2-0 start, who threw well last year. And mixing them in with the veteran Mike Torres gives you four right-handed starters, but some very good arms. A late arriving crowd, a lot of empty seats. Now the ballpark is sold out. I guess a lot of them are still over at Jerry Murphy's uh, bleachers, the saloon across the street, just on the other side of the scoreboard. Don Nystrom here with a group from Anheuser Busch and Jimmy Rittenberg with a couple of busloads of fans who. Uh, gathered for a brunch at Faces on Rush Street before heading for the ballpark. There you're going to look at Mel Hall, number 27. He'll be in there today. Pete Rose is going for his 4,000th hit. He's facing his old teammates, the Phillies, today in Montreal. He reached base on an air his first time at bat. He doesn't want that 4,000th hit to be at all controversial. He has already told the scorers that he doesn't want any break on any scoring ruling. He wants his hip to be absolutely clean. And that's the Pete Rose that you admire. We took a look at Dwight Gooden. He's 6'2", 190 pounds. And his 
only experience in professional baseball has been in Class A. He spent two years in Kingsport, Little Falls, and Lynchburg. Last year in Lynchburg, Virginia, all he did was go 19-4 and four with a 250 earned run average. But this is the statistic that pops out at you. 300 strikeouts in 191 innings. And that is probably one of the greatest strikeout-to-innings pitch ratio in all of professional sports. Well, there's a guy on the other side who's 26 years old. They've been predicting the potential, potential greatness in him that they're predicting right now in Gooden. Gooden is in his first year, already has scored his first victory at age 19. Steve Trout has been a while. A disappointment. Not that he isn't a good pitcher, but that he hasn't had as much success as everybody has predicted that he would have. Everybody is just waiting for him to get over the hump and have that truly great year that the strength of his left arm would indicate that eventually will come to him. He battled for a job in spring training. Dickie Knowles and Steve Trout were ticketed for the bullpen. When Rick Russell hurt his arm, there became a spot open, and Trout had a magnificent spring, that 225 earned run average, but he slipped back into form that he had last year during the first game, Harry, and it was a little disturbing that after three brilliant innings, he tired a little bit in the fourth and fifth. He had a lot of problems like that last year. We just had a look at your twin brother a moment ago, Steve. <laughs> yeah, but what a curveball he had, Harry. Unfortunately, it drove him into the seats. Look Let's at that haircut. Let's show him again. There he is. What a again. haircut. There he is right there. Steve's twin brother. <laughs> <laughs> Here go the come. Steve Trout approaching the mound. Listen to the fan. We're about to start. What I know is going to be an exciting 1984 season. So to get things started right, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, the very best to you. Prozit, I salute. This buds for you. Ah, boy. There's Steve breathing deeply already. What I don't like is you look at these two earned run averages, Steve. This Steve Stone. Dwight Gooden has an earn run average for the new season of 1.80. Steve Trout, 7.71. That means if those th things uh, come uh, hold up, that the Mets are going to win this game 8-2. to two. I don't like the sound of Jimmy Pearsall. Jimmy, how are you? What do you know, kid? Coach, I'm glad to be here. It looks like it's going to be a good season for you. It's going to be an exciting one, I'm sure. I want to give you some instruction. I want you to get excited. Uh, I want you to enjoy the games, and I want you to really enjoy yourself. Tell me, if you had a hit against Steve Stone four times every day for 10 years, don't you think your lifetime average would have been a little higher than 277? Well, I'd hit up on the plate, and I'd be closer to him and try and hit the ball to right field. That's what I try to do. I'll tell you what I think you'd do to him. I think you'd go downtown more often. Well, not really. He, maybe in the fifth <laughs> inning when he, when he starts to get high for some reason. Let's hope that he's changed his ways today. You think he'd knock you down once or twice? No, he's not that kind of a pitcher. No? No, I don't think so. I don't think he, and you can't knock down anymore. The umpires won't let you. It's a <laughs> sissy game now. Steve, uh, 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 Jimmy, you're doing a heck of a job. I, I catch your talk show every evening. Keep up the good work. Good, fine. I want to tell you, you and Steve, I really enjoy you every night, especially late at night, Harry, because it puts me to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> You look in good condition like you've been getting a lot of sleep. Feel good, Coach. Okay. Thank you. We're ready to go. Jimmy Pearsall visiting for a moment in our booth. The lakefront temperature, 54 degrees. What do you mean you never knock guys down? You did, didn't you, now and then? Harry, I would never do that. That's taking un unfair advantage of the situation. First pitch of the ball game. Whoa. This is Ron Gordon Hyer, place second base, hitting 211 for the New York Mets. There you see their lineup. Right-handed batter taps on. Steve Trout ought to throw him out. He does. One away. Listen to the roar of the crowd. Boy, it's just an exciting afternoon. I wish you were here. And I hope we can bring to you through Channel 9, which reaches all over the country, just part of the excitement that is in the air. There you see last year's Mets manager, Frank Howard. Now they're one of their coaches. 
Jose Okendo has changed his batting style a little bit. He's closed up his stance. He moved back in the batter's box. We'll be able to take a good look at it. That foot all the way on the back line. He thinks he can swing the bat a little better from here. Okendo takes the first pitch a little bit low. There you get a good look at him. Okendo, just 20 years old. Boy, they got nothing but kids on this club. Fastball low and inside. Okendo, a great fielder. And he can hit a little bit. He made three plays in the Astrodome, Harry, diving in the same inning. He got a standing ovation from the Astrodome crowd, not known for their boisterousness. There is a strike. Okendo, born in Puerto Rico, a Yankee doodle dandy, will be 21 years old on the 4th of July. Stands 5'10", doesn't look that big. He taps it foul, the count is even. Big, big sign out in the center field bleachers, I can't make it out. The Cubs will roar at 84, yeah, that's, I think I used that last year, about this year. 2-2 two, two pitch. Good pitch. Out of the way, Steve. It was significant that Trout went to the off-speed pitch early. Looked like a straight change. It caught Okendo completely by surprise. He took it over the inside corner. And if Steve can continue changing speeds, even when he gets in trouble, he could have a successful day. The wind is blowing out. It's a hitter's day here at Wrigley Field, so Steve will have to keep the ball down and try to get as many ground balls as he can. Two men are out. Nobody on. And that's a way to a great start. You know, they've won six out of their first seven. Here's Keith Hernandez, the great first baseman. He signed a contract. He's paying him about a million and a half a year. Two on, nobody on. The former Redbird. Fast wall of a low. To add to your enjoyment of uh, Channel 9 baseball this year, we've added a sixth camera on the first base field level side. So we can cover this game from every single position. We'll identify some of our cameramen. We have one on the visiting dugout side at the field level and then also the home team side. Three and one the count now on Hernandez. He's one of the only veterans, few veterans they have. 31 years old, fly ball is going to drop, left field, base hit Matthews, tried for a shoestring catch, couldn't reach it, a base hit, Hernandez going the other way, bloops one in the short left. Gary Matthews, a nice attempt, now watch it, fortunately this ball came up on him, he didn't keep his body in front, even Jimmy Pearsall would say that he was pretty fortunate to keep that one from going by. Here's George Foster. He's the oldest in their lineup at age 35. And a power hitter of great renown. He's hit one homer this season. He hit 26 last year. He can hit him out of any ballpark in America. He's the last guy to hit 50 home runs in the big leagues. People may have forgotten that. With the Reds, in 77, he hit 52. Strike two. Good off-speed pitch. Throwing low and away. That's the way you have to get, George. Now he can come in bad off the plate inside and perhaps jam him. Steve will probably stay away, however. Hey! Struck him out! has a fine first inning. Foster chased a bad ball. High and away. No run. One hit. No errors. One left. We go to the bottom of the first. No score. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field as we go to the bottom of the first inning. is a nice wire here from Chuck Guth, who's the district manager for Anheuser-Busch. And Don Neistrom and Mike LaMonica, Jr. In behalf of Budweiser, wishing us all the very best of luck in 1984. 
Well, the best of luck would be a division championship in the World Series here at Wrigley Field. There you take a look at the umpires. Dwight Gooden, born in Tampa, Florida, now resides in Tampa, was the Mets' first round pick in June of 1982. He was the fifth pick in the nation, and he certainly has gotten up here in a hurry. Watch for this gentleman's overpowering fastball. It usually rises. He's got a good biting curveball that he throws two different speeds, throws an occasional changeup, and has pretty good control for a man who has a fastball, the speeds of Dwight Gooden. All right, we'll get a good look at him right now. Bobby Dernier leading it off. Hitting 333 for the young season. Swings at the first pitch. The fly ball will be easy for Strawberry. Now, that's an unusual thing. Here's a... They must have a book on Gooden that he throws nothing but strikes. You'd think that your leadoff man would take a look at a young 19-year-old pitcher to see if he's going to be wild. They're near. Swung in the first pitch and popped out easily. He only averaged four walks a game last year, Harry, and in spring training he showed exceptionally good control, so he gets the ball over the plate. One out, nobody on. Sandberg takes a strike. I was just trying to see if Gooden reminds you a little bit of Bob Gibson. A little different style, but he throws just as hard. He fouls the pitch back. He's ahead of a mode in two. A little bit more controlled than Gibson was body-wise. And don't forget, and I'm sure you remember, Harry, Gibson was exceptionally wild as a kid. He had trouble getting the ball close to the plate. But Gooden looks like he's got a nice, smooth, fluid motion. The pitch inside. He's been around the plate with every pitch. Montreal out in front of the Phillies, two to nothing at the end of three rows. Did not yet get his 4,000 hit. Whoa, we foul tipped it on a check swing. Get well wishes to Michael Dowling, who's at Loyola Memorial Hospital, convalescing from a heart transplant. There's Jim Fry, the manager of the Cubs. Room 10 from Sigmund Chi Fraternity, the University of Illinois is here, along with former Cubs intern Alan Friedman. There you get a good look. Frank Howard. Curve a little high. Well, so far he has thrown a very good live fastball, a good sharp breaking curve, and the count is two and two on Sandberg. That was a high fastball. He fouled it back. The Mets had a limit on the pitches they wanted him to throw in the Astrodome. He had some hip problems in spring training. It'll be interesting to see if it troubles him today on a cool afternoon. Two, two pitch. Tapped it foul again. Arthur. Farmer and a hack, I guess it is, from Cicero. Great Cup fans here. So is Mark Sukomo from Mount Vernon, Iowa, pulling with the Cup. The pitch swung. Line down the left field line. Fair ball. Sandberg on his way to second base. He rounds second. He's going to hold. Listen to the crowd. Rhino took a breaking ball and drove it into the corner in left field. Watch the curveball. It's a good one. Breaks down. But Sandberg stays up with it, ropes it in the left field corner, and that's something he's doing a lot better this year. He's getting the head of the bat out and going to left field a little more. That'll spread the defense for him. They used to play him entirely around the right center field. Now they can't do that. Well, that's the influence of his new manager, Jim Fry, who has thought he should try to pull more. Sandberg is doing it effectively. Here's Gary Matthews, the left fielder. Strike over the inside corner. The lakefront temperature, 54 degrees. The wind out of the southeast and out of the southwest at 14. Not a bad day at all. Curve gets away, not far enough, and Sandberg, who had started for third,
change his mind. John Gibbons kept the ball under control very well. Pretty good play by a rookie. The difficult part of this play is locating the ball once it gets away. But watch him. He locates it right away. Doesn't have time to take off the mask, but keeps Sandberg at second base. So credit the rookie with a fine play. That would, that would have been a big play if, to, for Sandberg to get to third with only one out where a fly ball could score. Now it takes a hit. 1-1 one, one pitch. Low. By the way, Gary Matthews and his family are looking for a two- or three-bedroom apartment, preferably in a high-rise. Anybody who is interested in renting their apartment or home, please contact the Cubs Public Relations Office at 281-6955. 281-6955. If you rent your apartment to Gary Matthews, he'll leave you some free passes to the games now and then. Thanks, Harry. I can build a tent in back of the left field wall here. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. No score. to the roar of the mob. Don Zimmer never hesitated sending Sandberg. George Foster just stays back on this ball. The outfield is a little tacky. We had a lot of rain here yesterday. And a fastball right down the middle. The Sarge ropes it into left field. Now watch Foster. He kind of pulls up a little bit. Zimmer just kept sending Sandberg with the first run of the ball game. So the Cubs are out in front one to nothing. And here's Leon Durham, away to a slow start. The fact that he's not playing every day undoubtedly has had something to do with it. As it has for Buckner. There goes a runner swung and fouled on the play. Well, the Cubs are sure playing it loose today. There's, they're certainly relaxed. The runner was going, Matthews, and Durham was swinging. I don't know whether it was just a straight attempted steal coming up or whether it was a hit and run. One to nothing Cubs. Hope you're enjoying the telecast wherever you might be. A special welcome to Pat Patterson and all the Ho-Ho Cams out in Mesa. A little bit inside, even the count. Here's our new camera position. Can show you the keister of John Vukovic quite often. First base coach. <laughs> a ball and a strike to count. You sure get some good shots, aren't you? He's got a keister like Luke Easter. Stray call. Leon Durham, the batter. One out, one in, one on. Inning number one. The ones have it. One, two, the count. One and two, the pit. Hey, struck him out. Here's the fastball by him, and here's Ron Say. You know, here's what I'm afraid of, uh, Steve. With the popularity of a Buckner, whenever, nobody's going to hit every time up. Every time Durham is playing and Buckner isn't, if he's retired, somebody's going to boo. It's going to put a lot of pressure on both these guys. I think it puts a lot of pressure on the bull going to first base with Bill still on the ball club. The fans are reacting to it. I hope he doesn't put more pressure on himself, Harry. Here's Say now. And a breaking ball is a beauty. 19 years old, he's able to take a little off the breaking ball. And the most difficult thing about the curveball is throwing at two speeds and still throwing it for strikes. Gooden throws a hard one and a soft one that he throws like a changeup. He's showing a lot of poise for a youngster. Owen won the count. One to nothing. Cubs were in the first inning. Strike two. He struck out Durham, the fourth place hitter. Now he's a, a way ahead of Say, 0-2. Oh 
Say hitting 200 for the young season with one homer, three RBI. Sun out crowd at Wrigley Field on the home opener. Same two teams tomorrow. There goes a runner. There's a peg. Save for stolen base. Gary Matthews had a great jump on Dwight Gooden and stole second easily. He stole on the pitch. It was the off-speed breaking ball, a good pitch to run on, and Gibbons makes a good throw to second, but it's not in time. Matthews, with a great jump, makes it easily. Now a man in scoring position. One and two, the count of Ron Say. Oh, boy, if he'd get hold of one here. You'd hear this crowd. Low, and that evens the count. This guy throws a ball at about 94 miles an hour. And Scott Nadalny of the Cubs has figured it out. You have about 43% of the second in which to pick up the ball and hit it. High pump foul out of play. A souvenir for somebody. Hey, Arnie, right in that area, Ziggy Zarapsi, uh, the great All-American from Notre Dame years ago. He's sitting down there with Ben Stein. I wonder if we could pick him out. Right behind uh, where Jim Janik usually sits. Ziggy has a world of friends. Two balls, two strikes. Ron Say. Three, he laid off of that off-speed curve. And the count is full with Mel Hall due next. Three balls, two strikes. Big pitch. Whoa, he swung in a terrible ball over his head. Say he goes down swinging. Two Two strikeouts for Gooden in the first inning, but the Cubs score a run. Two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of one, the good guys won, the Mets nothing. There's Jim Janik of Cafe Bohemia. Let's see if we can find right behind him. Uh, it should be Ziggy Zarabski up in the section 128 along with Ben Stein and a couple of other people. Hey, listen, never mind that sweet talk. Bobby, Uncle Bobby Collins with his arm around Denise Cannon. What's going on? First, the heck with you, Bobby. I want to talk to Denise. All right. Hi, How's Harry. The, is the uh, uh, opener the lead story on the 9 o'clock news? Well, it certainly should be. It's an exciting day, and the weather permitted us to did be you, here. Did you have anything to do with the uh, other, the eight? Other pretty girls that they, uh, the Cubs hired here? Uh, no, but I'm glad they're here. They're uh, they're beautiful ladies, aren't you they? You look terrific. Thank you, Harry. Good okay. to see you. All right, we'll talk to Uncle Bobby in a moment. I can hardly wait. Uh, <laughs> Daryl Strawberry behind on the count 0 and 2. He's had three homers, each with the bases empty. There's a slider a little low and outside. One ball, two strikes. Daryl Strawberry, what a beautiful name. 22 years old, great young star. Just missed. Steve Trout thought he should have been in there. Two balls, two strikes. I talked to some of the players and I asked them if anything gives Strawberry trouble. And they said the cream. only thing they've seen is a left-handed breaking ball beside the cream. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. There's a drive, center field way back. Might be caught at the wall in it is. Bobby Dernier went to the Ivy for Strawberry's long drive. One away. Uncle Bobby Collins, get a good look at this. What? Now you'll see why he's not on television and is only on radio. Hey, 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 be nice. A nice, but we're showing a replay. Well, sure. How are you? Very good, Uncle Bobby. You do a terrific job. Your voice seems to clear it up after you and Brickhouse were out hoorahing last night in Peoria. Well, you know, my voice is never clear at 7 <laughs> in the morning when I talk to you. Yeah, right. Put, can we get the cue?
camera on Uncle Bobby? They don't want to do that now. It'll just scare you. Whoops, look at that. There's a uh, easy smash. Sandberg throws him out. And Mookie Wilson is easily retired. Two up, two down. Happy to be back. They're trying to find a camera with a big enough lens. <laughs> now they got one, Uncle Bobby. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So how you been? How do uh, how do you like that early morning stint instead of uh, well, it's, your uh, afternoon? Probably better than major surgery, but not a lot, you know. <laughs> All right, see you later, buddy. All right, kid, have fun. All right. Here is the first pitch to Hubie Brooks. He's hit a home run already this season. Two men out. One to nothing in favor of the Cubs. There's a high drive foul out of play. Boy, that strawberry left-hander sure bother him, don't they? One more biscuit for breakfast, and his ball would have landed in the empty center field seats, which are kept empty, empty as a hitter's background. Two balls and a strike. Fans from all over enjoying the game on the Superstation WGN Channel 9 Chicago. Bouncing ball, say to his left, throws him out. One, two, three, another good inning. We go to the bottom of the second. The Cubs are out in front, one to nothing. Carry with Steve Stone and with us in the booth, a dear, dear friend, a great, great broadcaster in the Hall of Fame. And this is one case where you cannot say the Hall of Shame. It really is Hall of Fame. Jack Brickhoff, an exciting day. Thanks, Harry. Of course, if uh, if they had followed you and me around in some of the earlier days, they would have had a Hall of Shame. Thank goodness they didn't catch it. I don't know whatever caused us to fly through that weather down to Peoria last night. We both ought to have our heads examined. That was fun, though. It was good to see the Nockens Ball Club get off to a good start. They yeah. only lost eight. They were losing eight to one when we left for the plane to come home. But at least they got the ceremony in. Jack, good to see you. Take care. All right, Harry, bring them in now. Will you? All righty. Bottom of the second inning. Here's Mel Hall. Whoa! Nice play by the pitcher, Gooden. Robbed him of a hit on that. That ball was sharply hit, and Gooden made a fine fielding play. Ted Pelokan here with the group. Still pulling for the Cubs. Andy Pafko with my good friend Don Easter with Anheuser Bush. One out over the yard. Hey, Andy. Here's Jody Davis batting 348. Here's Gooden's pitch. Swung and fouled it off. It hasn't taken the fans long to chant Jody, Jody. Here's a guy you played in the World Series here, huh? Last time the Cubs won one. 1945. 39 years ago. Would it's, you believe it? It's unbelievable that a team couldn't have locked in once in those years. Somewhere along the line, at least to get a stumble somewhere. Hey, listen, I think we got a left fielder almost as good as you were in those days now that's a new member of this ball club, just drove in the first run, Gary Matthews. He looks like a real good ball player. He's going to help the Cubs a lot this year. Watch that Don Nystrom with Anheuser Busch. He'll, he'll take the gold out of your teeth if he gets a chance. Is that right? I got to yeah. be careful. All right, oh, nice seeing you, Harry. Okay, buddy. Good luck to the Cubs. All righty. Andy Pafko. Pete Rose just got his 4,000th hit. A double to right field in Montreal on Jerry Kuzman. You have given him a standing ovation. There's a smash, base hit. Jody Davis drills one. He'll hold with a long single to right center. Jody Davis really hit the ball on the nose. Jody did just what he's been doing all year. Let's just watch his swing. He takes the fastball away and just drives it into right center field. This will put about 30 points on your batting average if you can do this consistently. We know Jody can turn on the ball also, but it never hurts to take the ball the opposite way, and Jody base hits in the right center. You know, Pete Rose will celebrate his 43rd birthday tomorrow, and he got his 4,000th hit today. 
He broke in with the Reds in 1963. All right, there's Larry Boa. High, pop fly, short, left field. Foster coming in. Makes the catch. Two minutes. You're watching exciting Chicago Cubs baseball through WGM Channel 9, Chicago, America's number one sports station. Where tonight at 9, you'll also see and hear Denise Cannon with John Drury doing the news. Steve Trout, pretty good hitter. Two, one to nothing in favor. The Cubs were in the second inning. S standing room only crowd on a threatening day. Fastball on the left side. We want to give you a new phone number. In the event you have a two or three bedroom apartment, your interests are a home that you're interested in and renting to Gary Matthews. Call the Cubs office. 281-5050. 281-5050. Two balls, no strikes. There's a strike call. Steve Trout, which means the leadoff man will open the third even if Trout would be retired. Here. Boy, he had a good cut on a fastball. That evens the count two and two. They hear from Phi Delta Theta at Valparaiso University. Bouncing ball toward short. Okendo's got it. And throws Steve out to retire the side. So it's no runs. One hit, no errors. One left. At the end of two, the Cubs won. The Mets nothing. Harry Carey and Steve Stone... Well, for a long, you know, Arnie Harris is improving with age. It used to be he'd only pick out the screwy-looking hats. Now he finds beautiful girls in the stand. That's, that's a movie star type. There's Arnie going back to his staple. A couple of cub hat shots. She's wired for sound, Harry. That's probably a new style of radio. You get to hear the game and see it at the same time. <laughs> Sometimes what you hear is not what you see. It's tough to get the peanuts in your mouth with that contraption. John Gibbons, the catcher, will be leading it off here in the top of the third. Steve Trout is breezed through the first two innings. Faces in the crowd. I think that ought to be a daily feature, Arnie. We got six cameras, ought to be able to pick people up from everywhere. Gibbons leading a crowd here from Bernie's across the street. Bouncing ball, deep shot, bow a long throw. Gets his man. Now there's experience. Larry knew that he had a catcher running. And he made sure the ball didn't take any trick hop on him, knowing that he had time to throw him out. Gibbons is an interesting story because he knows that John Stearns has to come back sometime, but he went to spring training with a positive attitude, figured he could win a spot as the starting catcher. That's exactly what happened. And even played through a fractured cheekbone encountered in spring training. Good defensive catcher. One out, nobody on. Here's the pitcher, Dwight Gooden now. Gooden, who will not be 20 until next November out of Tampa, Florida, where he still lives. A ball and a strike to count. No, they appealed it. He went, went around, and the uh, umpire says, yes, he did. So that changes the count to 0-2. Fouled him out of play. Montreal leading the Phillies 4-1 to one at the end of four, and Pete Rose 
double to right off Jerry Kuzman to chalk up the 4,000th hit of his great career. Bouncing ball ought to be easy. Sandberg throwing in time. Only one ball has been hit in the air. Strawberry's long drive to center field. It was caught by Dernier. Everything else but hit on the ground, which would indicate that Trout's sinker is sinking. Ron Gardner in a battle at second base with Wally Backman. Gardner, the better of the two defensively. Backman has the stick. Hey, they're listening in on in Las Vegas. There's uh, Jim Fry, the Cub manager. A little chewing tobacco. Swings the leadoff man, Ron Gordon Heyer. He tapped out to the mound his first time. One one pitch. Fouled it back. Judith Ivey, an actress, is here with Steve Trout's family. All pulling for Steve to win this one. One and two the count. There's a drive left field. Gary Matthews is there. Makes the cut. That retires the side. One, two, three. Seven in a row retired by Trout. We go into the bottom of the third. We'll have the top of the batting order coming up. One to nothing Cubs. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field as we go into the bottom of the third inning. Terry Hemmert. You're on the air, aren't you? Yeah, bright and early in the morning, Harry. Do you do sports or are you a disc jockey? Well, a little both. We have Bob Birdie from uh, the Tribune on our show every morning, and we talk about you quite a bit. I'm, I'm glad you don't listen. <laughs> Does he ever say anything good about anybody? Oh, about you all the uh, time, Harry. All the time. He loves your singing. Well, I mean. he's a great writer. and a great, I, I'll have to get up a little earlier to hear him. Really? Do that. Good to see you, Darren. Thank you, good Harry. Good luck to you. Thanks. Here's Bobby Dernier. Leading it off. John Brennan from Niles. Wires in. Wish we were there. Over 200 diehard Cub fans watching WGN at Brooklyn's in Denver, Colorado. Game held up just a little bit as Ron Gardner went in to get the sunglasses. Also... Daryl Strawberry has gone out to get some sunglasses, so the sun has poked through the clouds here at Wrigley, much to the delight of the fans. There's a lot of daughters here, too. Here's Dernier. <laughs> 0 for 1 for the day. There's an inveterate diehard Cub fan, Carl Applequist with the group. From Michigan City, Indiana. Dernier takes a strike. Well, the Tigers, who are the only unbeaten team in baseball, are having their problems today. Red Sox have scored five runs in the first inning. Here's Dernier. Fly ball. Center fielder Mookie Wilson almost loses the ball. Good thing he got the sunglasses. And he makes the catch. Big smile on the face of Mookie Wilson. This one almost blew over his head. The wind is blowing pretty briskly. And watch Wilson. He's battling the sun. And then the wind gets a hold of it. Get on back there, Mookie. You know, I mentioned the Tigers are having problems. What I didn't see until now, Detroit got eight runs in the top of the first. The Red Sox came back and got five in the bottom of the first. Another great pitching duel in baseball at Fenway Park today. Eight to five at the end of one Detroit unbeaten so far for the year. Leading. Sandberg has scored the only run of the ball game. Dwight Gooden's pitch. I wonder if his relatives are watching the game down in Tampa, Florida. You, New balls, no strikes. You've got to lay off the high fastball against Gooden. It rises a little bit. If you make him bring it down, you've got a chance. Ball is a little bit low. Ball three. Three balls. No strikes. One out. 
One to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Gooden's pitch. Ball, he walked him. Sandberg draws the first walk given up by Gooden, who's fanned two and allowed three hits. Here's Gary Matthews, who drove in the first run of the ball game. They're here from Warsaw, Indiana, Elaine Enders and Brenda Kramer. Throw to first, the runner back. again Joe Jaworski from Schaumburg enjoying the game one on one out a little bit low good well wishes to Randy Wilkening in Merrillville Indiana who had a, a ticket for opening day, but he came ill and watching the game from his hospital bed. One ball, no strike. Whoa, he had a good cut. Gooden once won 15 straight games. That was last year. Stayed unbeaten from the middle of May through the middle of August. There goes the runner. Strike call. There's a pack. Save for stolen base. Sandberg, who stole home earlier this year, steals second. Gibbons makes a pretty good throw, but he took a little too long to get it out of the glove. And Sandberg, a good slide, gets in under the tag of Okendo. Let's watch it again. And here's Gooden. He shows a good, strong arm. Might have taken a little too long to deliver it. Now Matthews has a shot of driving in another run. He single a left to drive in Sandberg in this situation in the first. Comes with two stolen bases already today. High, ball two to even the count. Jim Budka has been the engineer on a number of baseball broadcasts. Wires in from St. Petersburg, Florida, so they're getting our Cubs game down there. Curve, strike, ball. Matthews thought it was a bad ball. He's arguing with the plate umpire, Billy Williams. Boy, that was a wicked curveball. It's such a sharp breaking curve that Billy Williams waited till the last minute. Watch it again. Looks like it could have dropped a little bit low, but Billy Williams said no, it was a strike, and it buckled the knees of Gary Matthews. Here's Durham now. Swings at a fastball, and he misses. I tell you, the kid's curve is an overhanded curveball that breaks sharply down. One to nothing, the Cubs lead. We're in the third. Bright sunshine at the moment. that curveball we're wondering about Dwight Gooden's parents and friends in the Tampa St. Bay St. Pete area we know that the game is being seen down there from Jim Butka's message a ball and a strike in the hole one and two and there's Leon not very happy with his pitch selection that fastball rose started out at the letters rose above his head and the bull pulled the trigger missed it by plenty one and two of the count three strikeouts for good so far one to nothing in favor of the Cubs 
One and two the count the pitch on the way inside and the count evens two balls two strikes two out a runner in scoring position. Ron say on deck. The pit. He struck him out on a high fastball. That's a fourth strikeout. Four good. Mine will be joining Steve here in a moment. This is Harry Carey and Wrigley Field. We're after three exciting, well pitched innings. As you see it there, the score Cubs one, Mets nothing. Again, everybody, we're getting ready to go through the middle three. I'm Milo Hamilton, along with Steve Stone. All oh boy, you do wear cashmere, don't you? <laughs> and we are glad to be with you on this opening day. The sun has broken out. I guess it maybe got the second biggest applause here today. I guess the first went to Buckner as he got the big crowd reaction. But we are having a good ball game here. The young Mets and the Cubs, and it's one to nothing. And Trout is ready to work to Okendo. Bouncer Boa, big hop for the captain. Got him, and it's one away. Trout appears to have the good stuff here so far. He's thrown well, and when he gets ground balls, you know that the fastball is moving away from the right-handers and sinking. And if Steve can keep it, keep it down, he should be in good shape. And he's got to play it pretty close to the vest because the youngster on the other side shows no signs of throwing anything but smoke, Milo. And to go with that good fastball, he's throwing a very sharp, breaking, hard curveball. Well... In talking uh, to their ball club about him, as we look at Keith Hernandez fouling it off, they said, I said, well, when you say he's got a breaking ball, does he just have one or does he have a good one? They said he's got the best curveball on the staff. So when you got that to go with that 95 mile smoker and a pretty good straight change, too, he's, he, and he's got all the poise in the world. Man, he looks like he's been here 10 years. One ball, one strike. 19 years old. He's thrown eight innings thus far this year. Only walked three men, which is pretty good for anybody, but especially for a rookie who's got to be looking around at all these big ballparks. There's a good pitch in there, and Hernandez takes it. One ball, two strikes. Hernandez had a base hit in the first. So far, that is the only New York hit. Did he or didn't he? They're asking... said no he didn't Rocklander put the palms down take another look you decide for yourself it looks to me like he might have held up it's a good hard slider by Trout it's off the corner 2-2 two -two. crowds him at the shoulder as we come back 3-2 and two. Trout has not walked anybody struck out two got Okendo and Foster in the first inning the perennial Golden Glove first baseman Hernandez fouls it off and it holds three and two. Not an empty seat in the place, standing room only. It's been that way for a week. And looks as though maybe the weather's going to be all right now the rest of the afternoon. Hope so. Looks good right now. Fouled off, holding three and two to Keith Hernandez. I guess it's appropriate, Milo, that here on Friday the 13th, Detroit and Boston managed to put up 13 runs in the first inning in Boston. It's just a pleasure to pitch there. Oh, that is some ballpark. I know when the score came across with Detroit, when I was over on the radio side, I said, well, it might be one of those Boston days, and then no sooner said, here comes Detroit. Line drive hit right center. Haul over to get it in a hurry. Fire it in, and after Hernandez took the big turn, he'll be held to a single. So Hernandez, with his second hit, and that is the hit output for the Mets so far here today. And George Foster will be the batter. Foster originally came up with San Francisco, was later traded to Cincinnati, where he accomplished many of his feats, and now comes over to the Mets, trying to give him some power in the middle of the lineup. And Daryl Strawberry makes George Foster get some better pitches. You don't want to walk Foster ahead of Strawberry. So Daryl is adding protection for Foster. 
One ball, no strikes. The man who threw out the first pitch today, sore arm and all. He's a gamer, isn't he? Coach Ray Meyer. That's a ball. And tonight the coach is going to put on his coaching sport coat again and coach a cystic fibrosis benefit at Alumni Hall at DePaul. It'll get underway at 7 with a media game for a warm-up. Two balls, no strikes to Foster. Foster struck out swinging in the first inning. Coach was up all night. Mike McCormick had to soak that arm. There's a high foul up to the right side. Put me on the 15-day disabled list. 15-day disabled list after today for the coach. Really? Ah, there you look at that Cub jacket. Who's the guy with you, coach? Oh, you mean Hokey? Yeah, your old pal of 60 years. My left, Ed Manetta. Hey, I got to tell you, Ed Manetta and all his folks, Herb Newman, what a marvelous tribute and what a dinner Saturday night. Okay, Milo, and you were terrific there. That was the best affair I've ever attended, and you were the great part of it. There's a strike to Foster. Well, I tell you, I wouldn't have missed it for anything. It was a fabulous night, one of the nights to remember for sports in this city. Two balls, two strikes. Hernandez first base, one out. High fly ball center. Denier will take a look. Circling in that wind. Backing up. Makes the play. Holy Toledo. We had a little hit of that when Mookie Wilson had one. Almost jump over him. That wind is blowing a gale. It blew it around on Denier, and Steve, he managed to stay with it. You really can't tell how hard the wind is blowing until it gets up above the stands. Now watch Denier. This one pushes him way back. He just barely gets the glove up in time. Woo! All right, now here is Strawberry. A group of youngsters in New York Met uniforms. Garden hire, Okendo. Runner going, throw down. He got it! Wow, let's go! Jody, Jody! He can do it with his arm as well. And a caught stealing on Hernandez. And the side has been retired. And watch this gun out of Gainesville, Georgia. He threw out Steve Sachs two out of four times in Los Angeles, and Jody seems to have it all together. He gets Hernandez easily. Watch it from another angle. He's still out by plenty. Oh, great coverage by our crew, and what a throw by Jody. We have played into the middle of the fourth, and the Cubs lead one to nothing. ready to go into the bottom of the fourth. See any of your friends out there today? Big crowd at Wrigley Field. And they've been rewarded with a good ball game so far and now some good weather. Ed Manetta, you've got to be proud of the man you're standing next to and I know you've talked about it that he's not retiring really. He's going to be busy with so many things but what a response he got here today when he went to that mound. Well, it's been like that all year, Milo. And, of course, the other night was the tribute of tributes. And his coach said he will remember it. And he is a living legend, truly. But I want to thank you personally because, Milo, without you the other night making that long trip back, you were you were super. And it was fun to have you with us. And you really made the evening a big success. And I heard that from everyone that was there, national or local fans. Thank you very much. And I wouldn't have missed it for anything. I can always catch up on my sleep, but not again in my lifetime will I get a chance to MC the dinner for the coach. Well, you're making me blush. <laughs> Foul back by the Penguin. One and two. Say has hit safely in five or seven games coming into the day. It was a strikeout victim in the first inning. One ball, two strikes. Ball game in the fourth. Cubs got a run in the first, and they're leading one to nothing. Bounced it up there, two and two. Talking about the poise of this youngster when Matthews looked at that third call strike in the third. <laughs> I don't think a veteran like Matthews thought that kid was going to have that kind of a pitch for him in that spot. No, and it buckled Gary Matthews' knees. He <laughs> looked at it, thought it might have been a fastball. It broke over the outside corner. Whether it was a ball or strike, it broke so well. 
it's surprising that he has that good a curveball and can get it over the plate. Foul back. Well, when I heard about those things that he does and the fact that he's not bashful about throwing that breaking ball in key situations, well, he proved it right there against a good hitter who's off to a good start, Gary Matthews. Hall will be next, say leading off the fourth. Good and working. And he goes 3-2. Last time he went 3-2 on Ron Say, Ron swung at a bad pitch out of the strike zone. So let's see what he does right here with the youngster. 19 years old and pitching in the big leagues. And he missed with it. Ron didn't go for that one low inside. But seeing youngsters under fire is nothing new for the coach. These youngsters get more mature every year, don't they? Oh, yes. They start them at an earlier age. That man on the mound, goodness, doing an excellent job. We ought to take him on the Cubs. <laughs> oh, if it only could work that way. I'll trade. I'll go to the Mets. He can bring him to the Cubs. <laughs> Here is Hall with a nine-game hitting streak going back to last year. Runner going. Throw down. Not in time. So Jim Fry, once again, following the emphasis that he went for in spring training, wants movement on the bases. And here's a surprise. Mel Hall protecting Ron Say. Watch the throw. Say, who didn't steal a base all last year for the Cubs, had only three stolen bases back since 1981. He gets in here. They should give him the base. Maybe he can put that one up in his house, Milo. I think he ought to ask for it. That's three stolen bases and three attempts here, and the Cubs draw even for the year. They now have stolen six and have had six stolen against them. So Mel Hall with a chance to get another run home. One ball, one strike. Mel told me before the game that he loves fastballers. He doesn't care how hard they throw. Eventually, they got to come to him. And he's just looking one thing, fastball, and he's got to try to pull it with a man at second base. Let's see if Mel gets the job done. Say with his lead. Two balls and a strike. Lead off walk, stolen base. The Cubs have out hit them three to two, leading the score one to nothing, trying to build on that lead here in the fourth inning. Hall the batter and Jody's due up next. The hits belong to Sandberg, Matthews, and Davis. Matthews with the RBI. Off speed. I tell you one thing, when he's got that Hummer that he has, by having the other two pitches, you could hear it, you, the crowd realizes that they're ooing and aahing when he throws him a different pitch. You could hear it that time. Now Mel Hall has to look fastball. He's got to try to pull it. This is a position any hitter loves to be in. Pick a zone and then just let it go. A hitter's pitch. Oh, a high hummer, and he chased it, and it's three and two. That's the one you have to lay off of, and nobody knows that better than Mel, who's a little disappointed in himself. He realizes he should be standing at first base. Instead, he'll get another look. And you can't be too sure what he's going to come in with because he does have first base open. So it's still a guessing game. There you take a look at Ron Say at second. And he has thrown breaking balls, that curve on 3-2. He's got that kind of confidence. Like his pitching coach Mel Stottlemyre says, I have to keep pinching myself. He's, he doesn't act like he's 19. And he ended up walking him two walks in a row. Third walk to go with four strikeouts, and it'll bring up Jody Davis and a crowd with the Jody Jody. Out comes Mel Stottlemyre. He wants to have a word with his youngster. Mel, who had so many great years with the New York Yankees, one of the best sinkers perhaps that ever was in the American League. So he knows from experience how valuable that double play ball is, and that's exactly what he's telling the young fellow. There you take a look at Davey Johnson on the left, the mustachio. little fellow with the mustache, yeah. and the big guy, Frank Howard, who ran the ball club last year. And they're getting some action in their bullpen. And as we check that out, Ray, that's, that's uh, Ed Lynch. Ray, congratulations again on your big day here and the wonderful welcome they gave you here. And as always, we'll look forward to seeing you here often. Thank you, Milo. I'm very happy to be here. And it's real gratifying to me to hear the crowd. I, 
I'm very pleased. And I hope the Cubs win. That's all I care about. Well, keep wearing that Cub jacket. Hope good to see you, pal. You'll have your grandson out later. Yeah, I am. My granddaughter also. Ed, thanks for coming by. Okay, Mel. I'll see you a lot during the summer. You betcha. Great to have them with us. Now he'll go down and enjoy the rest of the game. You can bet on that. Jody Davis, the batter. Runners first and second. Nobody out. Swing, boy. He was sitting on that first pitch and fouled it off. That one drifted back, and Gibbons had a shot at it. He just missed the ball. It hit off the railing. And with the wind blowing back toward the field, you can't give up on anything. Now watch this one. He had a chance to retire Jody Davis. The wind brought it well back. And fortunately, 21-year-old rookies don't know a lot about the wind here at Wrigley Field, and he just misplayed that one. Jody Davis had a base hit in the second inning. He got a base hit into right center. Say it second, Hall at first, nobody out. Hit him on the fist and popped him into shallow right. Garden higher out, right fielder coming on, and the ball's going to drop. The wind will blow it. It'll be safe on every base. A wind-blown single. Jody has two straight hits. The bases are loaded for Larry Boa. When that one went up, Ron Gardenhire was in trouble. Not only is he battling the wind, he's battling the sun. Now watch him. He never really picks this one up with his back toward the infield. The ball just keeps drifting, and then he loses his footing. No chance to get that one. Now watch it. Watch his feet. They slide a little bit. He can't get to the ball, and Jody is in with his second hit of the day. So Larry Boa with a chance to do some good. After six innings, Montreal leads Philadelphia 4-1. to one. And in case you're joining us late, Pete Rose did get number 4,000. After two innings at Fenway, Detroit 8, Red Sox 6. Breaking ball low, and the crowd ready for a big inning. And the Cubs, after struggling for runs in Los Angeles, would like to have one of those big innings. And this would be a good time for Larry to get his first hit of the year left-handed. important for the runner at third base to be running in foul territory. Now watch it. This ball just barely misses Ron Say. He is in fair territory. That's a base running mistake. If the ball hits him, Larry Boa is going to wind up at first base. Well, he's going to be out. Larry Boa winds up with a base hit, but no run scores, and we have the bases loaded and one out. Boa the batter at the moment the bases are loaded with nobody out and the youngster in a trouble spot in the fourth inning. Line drive, center field, base hit, one run will score. Hall will be waved and the throw will be laid at the plate and two runs are in and Larry Boa with a big two run single. Say in with run number two. Hall in with run number three. Jody Davis at second. Boa at first with a two-run single, and the congratulations everywhere. Larry goes with it and just barely gets it over the head of shortstop Jose Okendo and in front of George Foster. And Foster doesn't have the best arm in the league. Zim knows that. He waves Mel Hall, and we've put three on the board. Steve Trout bounced out to the shortstop his first time up. Milo Hamilton with Steve Stone flanked on the left by the veteran and good friend of many years, Jack Rosenberg. Joe Cornell with the graphics. There's a bunt. for Trout. It's all falling apart for the youngster. Nobody goes to get this ball. Gooden falls off the mound to the first base side, and Yubi Brooks retreated to third base for the force out. A 
A great bunt by Steve Trout, who was doing the right thing. Got himself a base hit in the process. Ed Lynch continues to throw. The bases remain loaded with Cubs. And now the youngster is in his first major jam of his early major league career. I had talked earlier about opening days are always big. And Jeff Odenwald, congratulations. You've run off a great ship here today, pal. Thank you. I'm just glad that we got everything in and uh, the weatherman cooperated. And now the beginning, please. <laughs> yes. And you got your first big promotion coming up. Calendar weekend tomorrow and Sunday. Here's Dernier. Base is loaded. Whoa. And it's ball one. Everybody who comes to the park tomorrow and Sunday, thanks to one of the folks on the television side who make these games possible, Budweiser, with the calendar day tomorrow and Sunday. Bases are loaded. Nobody out. Look out. 2-0. You wonder how much longer you'll go with him here. Well, this is definitely his last hitter, and the two walks to lead off the inning really got Dwight Gooden in trouble. He walked Say and he walked Hall. Those are the two runs that have scored this inning. And now he's got to make a very difficult 2-0 pitch to Dernier. Take a look. Got it in, 2-1. Sandberg on deck, then Matthews. Bobby Denier is the sixth Cub to bat in the inning. Two runs are in, and the Cubs have a three to nothing lead. Fourth inning. Opener at home. As you take a look at the Cubs all over the bases. Two one count. Started after it, laid off in time, three and one. They ask for the appeal. Dick Stello says, uh uh. Dernier has flied to right and he's flied to center here today. Just put the ball in play. Three balls, one strike. Also have a good eye here. There's nobody out. 3-1 count. It's up. Oh, smothered. And he made a play. What a play by Garden Hire. He saved a run and maybe two. And I'm going to tell you something. He just made a marvelous play and, and put an out on the board for him. Took a base hit away from Bob Dernier, and Steve Trout was not running to second base. Watch this one. This ball almost gets through, and Gardner knocks it down. He flips to second. Trout's nowhere in the picture. Then he gets there, and the run scores. Watch it again. A great play. It saved a run. Got the youngster and out. Might have kept him in the ball game. Locates the ball and finally flips to Okendo. Trout forced at second. Boy, what a play by Gardenhire. And I've never seen him play second before. I've always seen him as a shortstop, but he made a great play there. He's got good range. He's the better of the two Met glove men. And now Larry Boa comes halfway down the line. Bothered him. Gooden steps back off the mound, which is exactly what you have to do. Larry's trying to force the youngster to balk. We got speed on the bases. Boa third, Dernier first, Sandberg the hitter. Rhino's one for one with a walk. Runner going, and the throw down will never be in time. And a stolen base for Bobby Dernier, and that's four stolen bases for the Chicago Cubs. You heard it right, four stolen bases, and we're only in the fourth inning. You don't usually see a Cub team on the run, but Jim Fry has everybody geared up, including Ron Say. Now Bob Dernier gets in the act. Watch it again. A delayed throw. There's no chance in the world of getting Dernier, but Okendo makes a very nice stop, keeping Boa at third base. All right, Don Zimmer, third base coach, moving right up that line with Boa. Two runners in scoring position for Sandberg with a strike one count. Ball one and one. We've added a sixth camera this year, and that's it from the first base side. So Arnie's got more buttons to push and numbers to yell. He'll think he's betting a double Quinella. Two balls and a strike. You all right, Arnie? All right. Your guys, you'd think this was the 4th of July, not the opener. What a job this crew is doing on Channel 9 today. Those shots they've been getting, outstanding. Two balls and a strike. Lined in the center, it will drop in a base hit. They're going to wave the second man, and it'll be safe. Two runs are in. Sandberg with a two-run single. Boa, run number five. Dernier, run number 
six, and the Cubs are literally trying to run the Mets right out of here. And that's going to be it for the youngster Gooden. Watch Sandberg drives the ball into center field, and Dernier never stops. Dernier is running when he realizes Mookie can't get to the ball, and there's no way to get him at home plate. He scores easily. Larry Boa ecstatic. And that's going to be it for the youngster. This has been a chamber of horrors for more than one pitcher. Dwight Gooden will always remember his first assignment in Wrigley Field. So Ed Lynch is coming on. Lynch, a right-hander as well. So Dwight Gooden got his baptism at Clark and Addison and leaves trailing 6 to nothing. There you take a look at Ed Lynch, six foot five inch, 210 pound right hander. He was mostly as a starter last year. He started 27 games and appeared in 30, was 10 and 10 with a 428 earned run average. Manager Davey Johnson has decided to go with four starters. They're all right handed, and Lynch has gone to the bullpen at least for the time being. And oh. the skies have cleared up a little bit, Milo. That's a welcome sight when you're leading six to nothing with. Only three outs to go to make this official. You got it. And you would think of that. Lynch on the year has made one appearance. He pitched two and a two thirds innings, gave up four hits and a run. 338 earned run average. We saw Lynch in a couple of starting roles last year. He threw the ball very well. And now Johnson has some flexibility with that bullpen. He's got a man we affectionately know as Dirk, Dick Tidrow, who came over after being released by the White Sox. And he's also got Craig Swan in the bullpen. And Pennant Fever has hit the fans here at Wrigley. See, that'll bring out a banner like that when you got a big inning going here, a five-run inning and leading six to nothing. You know, the Mets are here for three. Next week in the middle of the week, Whitey Herzog and the St. Louis Cardinals, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. A week from today, Chuck Tanner brings the Pittsburgh Pirates in for three. So a lot of chances for you on this first homestand. Up on the roof, that's where you'll find them. Somebody painted that roof, Arnie. But the big blue nine is gone. <laughs> in going back over the inning Milo I think that you can point to those leadoff walks that Dwight Gooden gave up and that's de generally a rookie mistake not limited to rookies but certainly young players are more susceptible to it than the veterans he walked say he walked Hall and that set the stage for a, a little bit of good luck for us and some bad luck for him the bunt that rolled unattended a base hit by Boa and so certainly he wasn't hit as hard as I've seen guys get hit, but those six runs aren't going to do his ERA any good. Gary Matthews ready to step in. Incidentally, those two ribbies by Sandberg gives him 10. He's about a month and a half ahead of last year when he got his 10th RBI. One ball, no strikes. Matthews is the eighth Cub to bat in the inning. There's still only one out. Two walks, four hits, two stolen bases in the inning. One ball, one strike. Looks like a Swan down in their bullpen. He's had some arm problems and he's trying to work them out in the bullpen for the Mets. There he is, number 27, Craig Swan. One ball, one strike. Oh, in there, one and two. And you could talk about it, but Swan could talk about it too. If you don't have the good health and the good arm, there's not much you can do. And he's been plagued by it, hasn't he? He's shown some flashes of brilliance, Milo. He had a, some great years with the Mets but he's had physical problems lately almost got Matthews but he got out of the way two balls two strikes Matthews one for two today he got the Cubs on the board in the first with an RBI single to chase Sandberg home dropped down a little more on him that time and now it's three and two you've got Sandberg at first base his two run single up the ante to six nothing. Boa had two RBIs in the inning. Runner going. Line right heading to right center field with the runner going. Sandberg will come to third easily. Hookie Wilson up with it. And a big turn at third by Sandberg. I'll tell you one thing, these Cubs are going to make you nervous. Zimmer keeps them coming until he finally puts on the brakes. He didn't know that he would have been able to score. You've got to watch this cutoff throw. It dribbles through Keith Hernandez. 
Mookie gets the ball in the infield. Sandberg is held up now. Now the ball dribbles home. Sandberg could have scored. Zimmer didn't know that when he held him up. But you got to like the aggressive coaching of Don Zimmer. He waits till the last minute. And <laughs> Sandberg was almost in the dugout trying to put on the brakes. I'll tell you one thing. If you're going to be on this club and you're on base, you better pay attention to Popeye. Because he's going to have you running all the time. And that's a ball. Durham. The ninth man to bat in the inning. He has struck out twice. The bull is pressing, and there's no doubt in my mind that he's pressing. Runners on the corners, one out. Ball two to the bull. Durham with his shaky start is down to 167 in the early games. Strike, and it's two and one. You just know that he's got to hit the ball hard this time at bat, Milo. He's too good a hitter to be hitting like he is. He is pressing a little bit. You can almost see it when he grabs the bat. Let's see what he does here. Teammates on the corners. And it's three and one. And Lynch is having trouble tuning in the radar here also. Fell behind Matthews. Gave up a hit. The Cubs have now out hit them. I've got eight hits on my card. You're right. The board has seven, but they do have eight. Runner going at first. Swing and a miss. The throw down. Now Matthews is going to bounce around, try to give Sandberg a chance to run, but they got him too quickly. And with the runner going, Matthews is out, and you'll take another look. Okendo looks like he's hurt. Let's watch it. It's a well-executed play. The throw is to Okendo, who then takes a look at third base. Now the ball hits him in the throwing hand. He runs down Matthews, puts the tag on the helmet, and Jose Okendo is hurt. Watch it again. He gets his throwing hand in the way. It looks like it hit off one of his fingers. No chance for Sandberg to score. Matthews is run down, and now the trainer is out to take a look, and he is in some pain. New skipper Davey Jansen who picked up a few gold gloves as a Baltimore Oriole played on some very fine teams. Well he also hit 41 home runs or 43 home runs he hit for Atlanta. Now I was there. We take a look at Okendo. It looks like he's going to come out of this one. The trainer is Steve Garland. He was out there to take a look and that could be a big loss because this kid is Ozzie Smith with a better arm. He has a tremendous arm at shortstop and can really get the ball. Hopefully that isn't broken. Well, I wonder who's got that plane out today. They're working on a bat handle. Jay Johnstone. That's what you do when you're not playing. You get a bat ready for when you are. And he's pretty pleased. The last couple of years, his first hit in the pinch hitting role was in the middle of May, so he feels he's way ahead of the game. <laughs> he's got a base hit here in April. Boy, he did it busting his tail doing it, too. Slid into first base to beat the rap. Ross Jones is in at shortstop now. And it looks like Okendo is going to have that hand looked at. This could be a terrible loss for the Mets. Okendo, who changed his hitting style, really shows a brilliant glove at shortstop. His arm is phenomenal and if he's hurt for any length of time it's going to take that double play combination that the Mets felt was one of their strong points and make them have to adjust their thinking a little bit. Now the bull is faced with a three and two pitch. There are two outs. Sandberg remains at third base. Matthews was thrown out on the bases. A good time to break out of it bull. Ross Jones out of Miami Florida. First year in the big leagues now they're shortstop swing and a miss on a change and he struck him out and Durham has struck out for the third time in three trips. The Cubs have an inning. They get five runs on one two three four five hits. Weren't any errors and one man was left. So through four innings the Cubs have it their own way right now leading New York six to nothing. There's the tail so far and if you're a Cub fan you got to like the looks of that. As we go to the fifth inning Strawberry will be leading it off. 
Trout has thrown exceptionally well thus far. He's given up two base hits to Keith Hernandez, and that's been it. He's kept the ball down. The Mets have not been able to mount anything, and Trout hasn't given up a base on balls yet. So with a six-run lead, it looks to be a comfortable outing thus far for Steve Trout. Waiting for Strawberry to come out. You know, Ray Meyer, who threw out today's ceremonial first pitch, was supposed to come onto the field in an antique car, and because of the softness after all the rain, they were unable to go through with that. Cubs would like to thank Joe and Ellen Tonelli from Spring Valley, Illinois. They drove up this morning in their 1922 Buick Touring Car. So the Cubs want to thank the Tonellis and hope to have their antique car back later this season. It'll just be more of an antique, that's all. They just keep getting better. And worth more. A ball and a strike. Strawberry flied to center in the second inning. Two balls and a strike. Trout in front, six to nothing. He's allowed two hits, and Hernandez has both of them. He's got such a beautiful stroke. No less than an expert than Ted Williams said he's got to be a star. Got enough of it to stay up there for another swing. Two balls, two strikes. Trout against Strawberry. Got him. Boy, I tell you, Trout with a smooth, even delivery that time. Completely fooled Strawberry on a fastball over the inside corner. Strawberry had one of his three home runs go into the center field bleachers in the Astrodome. And they said Mumphrey just looked up, couldn't believe there was a ball over his head. You're not used to seeing anything go out of center field in Houston. He jerked one up in the hitting background here last year. Awesome talent. Daryl Strawberry. Here's Mookie Wilson. Bounced the second first time up. Sandberg got there in fast man running throws. Safe at first base with Mookie Wilson running. And where you saw Sandberg end up with the ball, it would have taken a miracle to get him. But Sandberg did a heck of a job to get to that ball. He couldn't plant his feet. He had to get the ball away in a hurry. And he tried a bouncing throw to first base. Sandberg realizes who's running. No chance to get Mookie at first. He beats it out for a base hit. Watch it again. You won't see a smoother fielder in the league. And when Jim Fry was asked what kind of fielder Ryan Sandberg was, he says, I guess he's pretty good. I haven't seen him miss anything yet. There's a strike to Brooks. And having been in both leagues as a coach and a manager and a coach again, Fry says he's as good as any second baseman I've seen in 15 years, and that takes in a lot of territory. Ryan Sandberg, the Golden Glover last year, fouled off by UB Brooks, got an 0-2 count on him. Milo Hamilton and Steve Stone with Cubs Television on WGN, Television 9 in Chicago, Chicago's very own, and America's number one sports station. With the Cubs on top, 6 to nothing. Mets at bat in the fifth inning. Boy, I tell you, even when Trout doesn't look like he's bringing it hard today, he's got some pop in it. He's got a good fastball, and he made a very good 0-2 pitch. He pushed Brooks off the plate. ub has been told that they need some more power out of the third base position, so he's starting to turn on the ball a little bit. He's looking for the home run. In years past, he always looked to right field. A good average hitter, but third baseman in the big leagues have to hit for power. And now Brooks steps out. Davey Johnson had a talk with him. He said, look, I was a second baseman. I hit for a little bit of power, and you can keep yourself around the league a lot longer if you can hit some home runs. So look for Brooks to try to be supplying some. Runner at first with a lead, not going anywhere right there. And there is a strikeout, two in the inning, and four in the game for the Rainbow. Well, maybe it's an omen. When you have rain here today, and it suddenly breaks out a little sun, Maybe the rainbow will prevail. He's prevailed so far, hasn't walked anybody. Four strikeouts, more important than that, he's getting ahead of every hitter, getting everything over the plate. John Gibbons, rookie catcher. Never caught above double A. The shortstop who came in for Okendo had played in triple A last year. So everybody you see coming on, pretty young. So that's why Foster and Hernandez have to stabilize that club. 
two balls no strikes and they've gotten out of the gate with a flourish and the Cubs are trying to slow that Met Express down here today trying to establish hey wait a minute we think we're better too we got to show you now Cubs are leading six to nothing comebacker trout easy side retired no runs and a hit no errors and a man left we are halfway through this game and after four and a half the Cubs have six runs on eight hits the Mets are scoreless with three hits. That'll refresh your memory about how it looks from many different angles at Wrigley Field. As we play our home opener, and the Cubs have the six to nothing lead as they come to bat in the fifth inning. And Ron Say, who started the five run fourth with a walk and then a stolen base for the Penguin, will be leading it off. He'll be looking at Lynch. I think just enough when they took the tarp on and off a few times that started to sprinkle just enough that the pitcher today will find himself having to clean out those spikes a little more. It's hard if you don't get any footing around the pitcher's mound and so Lynch has that little tongue depressor out there to take the dirt out of his cleats. One ball no strikes to say Hall do up next. Parrish hit a home run in the fourth nobody on his first for Detroit. Detroit now leading Boston nine to six at Fenway. Ball two. It looks when he drops down more like he's got better control, Lynch. It looks like he's had arm problems at one time in his career, Milo. He short arms the ball just a little bit. An unusual delivery. It looks like he's doing it all with his arm, too, doesn't it? He is throwing a lot of arm here. He came over originally from Texas in 1979 as a player to be named later in the Willie Montanez trade. Three balls and a strike. There's a drive. Deep left center field. Ball is going, going, gone. Holy Toledo. The Penguin bangs one out at Wrigley. Run number two for Ron Say, RBI number four. The Cubs are threatening to make this one a laugher. The fans are certainly enjoying it as Say gets a standing ovation. He just took a fastball, what looked on the inner half, and drove it deep into the seats in left center field. A happy Penguin. And Lynch paid the price for falling behind again. Now it is a seven to nothing ball game. Hall sends a high foul down the left side. It'll bend back out of play. Here's the home run swing. Was a fastball on the inner half, and Ron Say on a three and one count wasn't letting this one get by. If you want to know what a wheelhouse is, that pitch was in Ron Say's wheelhouse. No balls and a strike to Hall. He walked in the fourth inning and scored the third run. Sends one out to right, but Strawberry is right there. And with that boarding house reach, he doesn't have to move. He just reaches up, and there it is. With Ray Meyer being in the crowd today, he looks at Strawberry, and his mouth's got a water, saying, oh, I wonder if he... There's the Penguin. That's the happiness of driving one and being in front. Watching down in Sarasota today. There's a foul ball on Jody's bat. Somebody caught that ball barehanded. No wonder the crowd roared. I'd take a bow too. <laughs> Look out. Jody is two for two today and has a seven game hitting streak. Two one. 
tapped it foul. General manager of the Cedar Rapids Indians back in 1950, 51, 52. Jim Megan watching down in Sarasota. I remember him well. He later became mayor of Cedar Rapids. That's a twist. 2-2. Two -two. Fouled off. Steve, I don't know if you ever heard about it, but years ago, a lot of the big league ball players would barnstorm and then be invited for a big pheasant hunt up in Dakota, and Jim Megan was the fellow who planned all that for him. They had some great times. Three balls, two strikes. And Jim Budka, former engineer in this city watching in St. Pete. There's a ball to Jody. I imagine Budka called up the minute he heard Joe Corneo's name. They're old pals. First walk by Lynch, and that is the fourth Cub to walk in this game. Jody's having a good day. <laughs> that ball that he had fall in for him and the fourth inning was some hit. Fortunately, Gardenhire couldn't get to it, but you got to have those over the course of a year. Those really round out that batting average. Larry Boa had a two-run single last time up, and the one that Jody will be the proudest of, he loves to hit, don't misunderstand me, but he likes that gun he trotted out today throwing guys out, too. He looks like a different catcher, Milo. Unbelievable. Johnny Oates has worked with him well. He's got his footwork down, his delivery, is terrific to second base. It's quick and it's been right on the money. There's a strike. Well, you know, the first two weeks of spring training before Jody was injured, Johnny Oates and Larry Cox, a former catcher who's now our manager at Quad Cities, they were with him day and night, working with him, showing him tape replays of what he was doing. There is a strike, two and two. I think Boa has a different idea about that, but right now, Save it for a time when it means something, not when you're leading seven to nothing and the captain's kind of quiet right now. He just kind of let him know, though, didn't he? I thought it might have been a little bit inside. Now it's full. Lynch had pretty much better get out of this himself. Manager Dave Johnson doesn't have anybody up, and in a seven to nothing game, he tells his middle reliever, You're on your own, kid. You better hold them down. Yeah, hold them where they are. Runner going. Slap down the third. Brooks up. Gets him and Jody by moving. They aren't able to get the front man. So it's two away, and it'll bring up Trout. Trout, who had a bunt single in the fourth, is one for two. The Cubs have out hit him nine to three and lead in the score six to nothing. Trout's a pretty good hitting pitcher, and he wears out that hole between third and shortstop. If he gets a base hit, it's generally in that direction. Swan has started to loosen again in the New York bullpen. Tapper up the third base side. Lynch will... No! Now they're going to have Davis caught in a rundown because it... Jody coming around, gambling that Lynch was going to try to throw to first. Had he have thrown to first, it would have worked because he couldn't have gotten Trout, but they got Jody. The thing that sets this play up is the fake by Lynch. Watch, he fakes the first, and then Jody keeps on going. No chance for him. Watch it again. When Lynch looks to first, Jody rounds the bag. Now there, he looks to first, fakes, turns around, and lo and behold, Jody's right in his face. See you later. <laughs> All right, so one run on the homer by Say. We've played five, and the Cubs lead seven to nothing. <laughs> Going to the sixth inning, I want to send along a hello to Michael Dowling, the young man who underwent a heart transplant at Loyola Memorial last month, released this week getting along fine and he can't wait to get out and see the Cubs and we can't wait for Michael Dowling to get out here either. Also Louise Dewberry of Chicago says she might be the one of the oldest Cub fans. Hasn't missed a game in 40 years. 
Speaking of older fans, the diehard club out in Rock Island, one of the best. Dick Sellen from Rock Island, who is one of those hard working, diehard Cub fans. He is signing up people all the time. It's great to have those kind of people rooting for you. Junior Ortiz is going to hit for Ed Lynch. Ortiz, who came over from the Pirates. 182 average in the young season, three RBIs. Line drive going to sneak. Look at Hall. Look at Hall dive and make the play. And not a comfortable position for the glove to be in and hang on. Take another look at that, Steve. Mel Hall is playing him well, and he comes in and makes a spectacular diving catch. This looked like a base hit all the way. Watch Mel, a backhanded stab. He comes sliding in. Great play by Mel. Boy, a lot of times holding that glove down like that and your elbow will hit, that ball will pop out. Fine play by Hall. Here is Gardenhire, 0 for 2. Strike. Trout throwing free and easy. He's got good stuff and he's working in the sixth inning with a 7 to nothing lead. The Rainbow pitched one home opener early for the Sox and lost. He's trying to get even for home openers today. The important thing now for Steve Trout is don't put anybody on base via the base on balls. He hasn't yet. He's gotten ahead of everybody and he's throwing the ball very well. You wouldn't have been pitching that day, would you, when he got beaten the home opener 80 of the Orioles beating 5 to 3? I didn't throw the 80 opener. I threw the 81 opener. That was the year that. Mike Flanagan winning the Cy Young Award in 1979 came on to throw that one and defeat Steve Trout. Two balls, two strikes. Still two and two. John McDonough, Cubs Director of Promotions and Sales. We want to send get well wishes to his mother, Eleanor McDonough. Spin foul down the right side. Fans will have a souvenir right down the right field line. Two balls, two strikes, nobody on, one away. Trout has faced three hits. Hernandez in the first, a single. Hernandez again in the fourth, a single. And Wilson had a base hit in the fifth. Those are the three New York hits as Trout rolling along here in the sixth inning and hope he can keep that good stuff. Fly ball, left center coming on. Gary Matthews makes the play, and it's two down. Milo, this is even more of an impressive outing because the wind is blowing out so hard. And any fly ball of any depth at all is going to blow out of this ballpark. We've seen the outfielders and infielders have a tremendous problem when the ball gets above the stand. So Trout, when he has given up a fly ball, it's generally on a jam shot, and it hasn't carried anywhere. This is Jones batting for the first time. He came over from Los Angeles in the trade that sent Bob Baylor to the Dodgers. Sid Fernandez came over with him. He played at Albuquerque the last couple of years in that Dodger chain where they've had some fine ball clubs over the years. He hit 273, three homers and 56 ribbies. 1-1. Deep short, Boa got him. Three up and three down. So Trout has pitched through six and is still in front. Cubs seven, Mets nothing. Boy, they're doing a job in those Cub caps here today, aren't they? It's great to see them here on opening day. I hope they'll come back often and see the 84 edition of the Chicago Cubs who with a win today could get back to 500 two more games with the Mets tomorrow and Sunday calendar weekend the Cardinals come in for three and the Pirates for three on this first home stand Craig Swan is coming on to throw he's one and oh a 225 earned run average four innings this year he's given up a couple of hits and one run Swan's best year was 11 and 7 in 1982. He also won 14 games while losing 13 in 1979. Is a 58-71 lifetime earned run average, mostly as a starter. Now he finds himself in middle relief. Bob Denier, one for three. 
One ball, no strikes. Denier, safe on a fielder's choice in the fourth, got credit for the driving in the fourth run, stole a base, and then scored run number six. Two balls, no strikes. This guy must have brought a group, and he promised, hey, I'll not only get you there, I'll give you the concessions. Whatever makes you happy. Popped over to the right side. Hernandez over to take a look. The wind going to bring it back for him. Hernandez gives a little nod to the bullpen. Thanks for yelling, because he got right over by him. Normally that ball would have been in the seats, but the wind that's blowing out brought it back and Hernandez over to make the play. Here is Ryan Sandberg. He is two for two, two RBIs, a stolen base, and a run scored. Doing a lot of things to help you win here today. Ryan Sandberg, strike one. As we had mentioned earlier, Stanton Cook, Andy McKenna, Jim Finks were down below in the club box, but up in his perch where he looks down to see how his club is doing, Dallas Green. Look out! Oh, he stayed with it! So the young catcher is finding out that Wrigley Field can be a different place to play. You try to line this one up with your nose, and hopefully you can keep your nose under it long enough so you can catch it. This one almost blows back in fair territory. Watch it again as Gibbons drifts back and stays with it. Boy, Swan has had some problems. He had a slight tear of the rotator cuff, had an appendicitis, which sidelined him for a while. This is Gary Matthews. One ball, no strikes. Matthews two for three, a stolen base and a run batted in. That jarred the catcher a little bit, rolled out toward the mound. And the count is even at a ball and a strike. Swan didn't have to have rotator cuff surgery. Nobody's ever come back from that. He just had 10 or 12 weeks on the disabled list. He eventually rehabilitated himself. 1-1 one, one to Matthews. Two balls and a strike. Two and one to count. That'll be a foul way down the right side. Up making sure that everything is all right in the WGN facility, Mr. Jim Doddle. Nice to see you, Chief. Good to be here. Nothing like a little happiness at the park. You've, you've got that big smile today. 2-2. Two, two. Look out. Full count. Matthews had to get under a low bridge. Nobody on, two down, Cubs are leading, seven to nothing, at a five run fourth. That'll be a base on ball. Walk number one by Swan and number five for the Cubs today, and here is Durham. Gonna take some of the static for a position that he didn't create. I'd love to see him get a base hit. center but it will be off the wall here comes Gary Matthews here comes the ball to third and a boy ball and a way to do it change those boo birds to cheer birds whatever you can see what the wind does to fly balls here today Mookie Wilson has this one all the way. It looks like it's popped up, but it's popped up awfully deep. Now watch Wilson. He runs out of room. The ball winds up against the wall, and George Foster alertly backs him up, but not before Leon knocks in the eighth run, winds up all the way at third base. Boy, that ought to do him a world of good. Now Ron Say is waiting for Swan to clean out the spikes. Eight to nothing Cubs. You don't have to really remind a player if he struck out three times in three trips. He knows it better than you do. And when he can get up there and sock one like he did, more power to the bull. And that's a ball, 1-0. Oh. 
Ron Say today is one for two plus a walk. His one was a home run to left center in the fifth inning. Right back to the mound. Swan will come off. Fire to Hernandez. Side retired, but the Cubs with a walk and a triple. Durham driving in Matthews. One run, one hit. No errors, one left. And after six innings, the Cubs in their home opener are pleasing themselves and the crowd leading New York eight to nothing. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey with Steve Stone, where at Wrigley Field, where things never look more beautiful. The Cubs are out in front eight to nothing, and they've had it all today. They have had great pitching from Steve Strout. Trout has been outstanding. He's also had a, added to the offense with a hit, two hits as a matter of fact. They've had the long ball, a home run by Say. They have had RBI hits up and down the lineup. They had Durham strike out the first three times, and then when the few boos being heard as he stepped to the plate, in the sixth, he hit the very first pitch off the top of the left center field wall to bring everybody cheering and roaring, roaring in their applause to their feet. So a little bit of everything as we go into the top of the seventh. And here's Keith Hernandez, who has two of the three hits that Steve Trout has allowed. And he's been the one of the few left-handed batters in the lineup. First pitch. A little wide. Pete Rose got that 4,000 hit today. As he helped Montreal beat the Phillies 5 to 1. And what a slugfest at Boston. 9 to 6. The Tigers lead at the end of 5. on a strike. Ground ball headed for right field. Base hit is third for Hernandez. That will bring up George Foster 0 for 2 today. Mookie Wilson got that infield hit in the fifth inning that Sandberg couldn't make a play on. And other than that, Hernandez is the only one with any success against Steve Trout. Charlie Lee was the winner for Montreal today, a five hitter. Jerry Kuzman was the loser. 48,000 at Montreal today. Here's Foster with one on, nobody out. Half Sweeney files it back. Soren Hall from Notre Dame represented here today. A group of 45 of them. One strike and nothing. The National Honor Society from Loyola's here. Foster takes a strike call. The Stevensville, Michigan, American Legion. Die-hard Cub fans are here. The pitch. Got a low one outside. One and two the count. Fouled it back. Out of play. Watching exciting Chicago Cubs baseball through WGN Channel 9, Chicago America's number one sports station. Foster fouls it off again. One and two, the count. Well, 
They're watching the game down in New Orleans and also in Iowa City and also in Las Vegas, Nevada. Evens the count, two balls, two strikes. They're here from Tampa, Florida. Everyone's enjoying the game today. Is that a relative of yours, too? It's a good way to keep warm, I'll tell you that. I mean, the good looking girl. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. fly ball deep right way back might be out of here it could be it is Foster hits one out of the ballpark to the opposite field on a 2-2 pitch unusual for George Foster who doesn't usually hit him to right and that one went over the head of Mel Hall the wind just continued to carry it that's the second home run for George Foster. RBI's number eight and nine, and Foster is off to a good start this year. That wind blows out. He's blowing out of the southwest at 14 miles an hour. Yet he hits this ball over the right field wall. And he hit it well over the wall. Here now is Darryl Strawberry. That for Foster, his second home run of the new season. Activity in the bullpen. Dickie Knowles. Here's a pitch swung on a miss. One of my viewers writes, uh, sends a message in that uh, Pete Rose got his first hit April the 13th, 1963. Easy out. Strawberry is thrown out by Sandberg. If that note is right, that's an oddity that 22 some odd 22 years later, on the very same date of April the 13th, that he would get his 4,000th hit. The first coming on the same day 22 years ago. One out. Two in, eight to two Cubs. And this is Mookie Wilson batting right-handed. Switch hitter. Remember, calendar weekend tomorrow and Sunday. Smash to Shark. Larry Boa. He is out. Boy, Larry has played just well. Everybody's looked. This has looked like a team headed for the World Series here today. I wish we could just film this game and not even show up the rest of the year. Just play play the tape every day. Hubie Brooks stands in. 0 for 2 today. Look at smash off Trout's glove. Boa throws him out. Hubie Brooks. Smash run. Trout's got his glove up in time. And Larry Boa made a great play. No error. Nobody left. Listen to this crowd. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Cubs eight. Mets two. All right. Everybody, let me hear you. What a day to sing. A one. A two. Everybody now. A three.
Harry Carey and Steve Stone. We go on the bottom of the seventh. Here's Mel Hall. Made a great catch earlier today. Boy, I tell you, we have had everything. This has been the perfect home opener. I don't know, Harry. I think they took the pressure off you by playing the organ for that take me out to the ball game. <laughs> Here's a drive by Mel Hall. Strawberry back. It's over his head. And here's Hall on his way to second base with a double. He really creamed that one. That keeps his hitting streak alive at 10. Strawberry thinks he has this one. He stops a little bit, and then the ball blows over his head. No chance to get it. Mel on the way to second. Here's Jody Davis with a perfect day so far. Two singles and a walk. Listen to him, Jody, 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 Jody Davis. They're rolling at Hall, Miss First Base, but they, the appeal is not allowed. Hernandez thought they might as well try. Billy Williams has to make the call because Dick Stello went out to see if the ball was caught, so it's the home plate umpire's decision. Jody takes a curve in there. Craig Swan, the third pitcher used. Eight to two, the Cubs are out in front. George Foster had a two-run homer off Steve Trout to put him on the scoreboard, taking him off the Schneider. Whoa, he didn't mean to swing. He wanted to check it. Fouled it off. Well, the new Cubs song is Go Cubs Go. And it sure applies today. They're watching in Edina, Minnesota. Curveball a little bit low. Familiar pitching style. We've seen it many times. Dick Tidrow is throwing in the Mets bullpen. Tidrow, whom you all remember from the Cub days, and also with the White Sox last year. Curve low. Two balls, two strikes. The Gustafsons are here from Crystal Falls, Michigan. Two and two is the count. first home run of the year. Look at it. Look at a smile as he trades a high five. Here's Boa. First pitch he fouls it back. Probably thinking what a heck of a guy to have to follow in the batting order with 40,000 people looking on. Jody with a perfect day. Look at that. Do you think he isn't a happy young man? There's Bob Dernier right there. There's Jay, Jay Johnstone walking towards you. Look at the grin. Handsome young guy. There's Bill Buckner sitting next to Jim Fry. And Jody Davis, a perfect day, three out of three. Climaxing it with a home run of Craig Swan. There's a ground ball to the second baseman. Garden higher. Throws Bo out. Ten to two now. Say and uh, Jody Davis have hit homers. Leon Durham had a triple. Here's Trout getting a great hand. Standing ovation for young Steve Trout. Look at this. Swings and he pops a foul out of play. Steve going for his first victory of the year. He's also had a couple of hits. He's had two runs batted in for the season. It could well be this might be 
the making of this kid today. He just needs a, a good outing or two in succession, and there's no telling how many he'll win. 0-2 oh, the pitch. Ball game in the seventh. 10 to 2 cup. He struck him out. Did Bobby Dernier fans give a give Trout a great hand as he comes towards the dugout? Jody, Jody Davis. I'm torn between my desire to have him have a great year and hit a lot of home runs and you're singing, Harry. <laughs> Well, I think we'll have a few limericks <laughs> before the year is over. One ball, no strikes. Dernier takes it high. Ah, the ice-cold Budweiser will taste better than ever after the game today. Two balls, no strikes. Near drove in a run in the fourth. Stole a base, comes with swipe four of them. On the side, Jim Fry's knowledge of the Mets ball club as their former coach and of the Mets personnel. Brown on in the hole, going to be a close play. He is out. To retire the side, Ross Jones threw out Dernier. Two runs, two hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of seven, it's the Cubs 10, the Mets 2. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. We're going to the top of the eighth inning now. Steve Trout would like to go all the way. Become the first Cub pitcher of the new season to pitch a complete game. The DUs are here from Bradley University in Peoria. While Pete Von Aachen's Peoria Chiefs took it on the chin 10 to 1 last night. Good pitching staff down there, huh? Well, maybe it'll be better tonight. Here's John Gibbons. The Cubs with 13 hits, four stolen bases, a couple of home runs, triples, doubles. There's a smash right on Larry Boa. Fine defensive plays like that one. Look at this. Is it 87 degrees at, at Wrigley Field? Might be a Budweiser or two in that young man. <laughs> Take off your shirt today. I know he's not getting any sun. Well, the, uh, the ardor of the fans heats the body another guy is a little more normal I guess look how he's dressed scarf gloves overcoat we have a pinch hitter coming up Mike Fitzgerald has come on to hit for Swan it'll be Dick Tidrow coming on in the eighth for the Mets there's the pitch a little outside to even the count of ball and the strike. Fitzgerald. Right hand batter waiting. He didn't mean to swing a little dribbler. Larry Boa's going to throw him out. Boa throws out Mike Fitzgerald. Who tried to check his swing and hit one of those. I didn't mean to do it rollers to Shark. Ross Jones is in the ball game instead of Jose Okendo and the Mets may have lost something a lot more valuable than this game if Okendo is hurt. He took a throw at second base and the ball landed off his hand. Hopefully the young shortstop will be OK. There's a ground ball hit to Larry Boa again. Gordon Heyer rolls to Boa and it's an easy inning for Trout. One two three. We go into the bottom half of the eighth inning. Cubs 10, Mets 2. Yeah. Harry Carey and Steve Stone, we go now. 
into the bottom of the eighth inning. Ryan Sandberg has had a good day, two out of three, two runs batted in, a stolen base, a run scored. Sandberg will be leading it off against a new pitcher, Dick Tidrow. Tidrow was a free agent after being released by the White Sox. He caught on with the Mets, made the club in spring training. He threw the ball very well. He gives him some stability in the bullpen. Tidrow is performing in his third ball game, a 450 earned run average. He's only thrown two innings. So Dirt will come on in a game that looks like it's not going to mean a great deal, but he'd like to have a couple of good outings because. They do a lot of shifting before that June 15th trade deadline and Dirt would like to be around for another couple of years. Remember the game tomorrow on calendar day it will be one hour later at 220 start. Here's Tidrow's first pitch curveball in there for a strike call. Tidrow tough on right hand hitters because he wheels from the side. Remember 2.20 starting time tomorrow. Here's a little tap right to the mound. Tidrow's got it. Tidrow throws out Sandberg. The leadoff man at 2 o'clock tomorrow, then the game at 2.20. Tigers trying to remain baseball's only unbeaten team are leading in Boston 9-6 to six in the bottom of the seventh. There from Soren Hall in Notre Dame. One out, nobody on Gary Matthews. Who drove in the first run of the ball game. One ball, no strikes. There's a long drive. Way back. It might be. It could be. It is. A home run. Holy cow. center field bleachers three for four today for Matthews who continues to be an offensive spark for the Cubs his third RBI of the year he's got two of those today his first home run that's a third today for the Cubs they've, got, they've had everything finesse four stolen bases power three home runs and a triple Here's Leon Durham. He's one for four today. A triple that drove in a run in the sixth. There's a strike off. Birthday greetings to Bo Peterson. There's Gary Matthews. Happy young man. His first game as a Cub in Chicago. Watch it again. Matthew shows you how strong he is by driving this one to right center field. Mookie just gives up. Boy, Durham had a good cut. Hey, Arnie, have we showed Marla Collins for the first time in 1984? One and two the count. That evens it up at two and two. There's Marla. Dressed very warmly. Ball three. Those aren't her stockings. Her legs are blue today from sitting out in the cold. Pitch fouled out of play. 33,436 paid here. On a threatening day in Chicago. Well, he walked him. Durham gets a base on ball. Goodson, a good and started. Pitch three in the third innings, then Lynch. An inning in the third, Swan two, and Tidrow will finish it up for the Mets. 
Cubs now are leading 11 to 2. Doug Sisk is now throwing in the bullpen for the Mets. So they haven't hit anything from us. We've seen just about all of them except for Jesse Orozco. Say it's a high pop fly. Short center everybody chasing it. And Mookie Wilson makes the catch and they're going to get a double play at first base because Durham forgot how many out there were and he was running. He thought there were two out. And that becomes a double play and it's one run, one hit. No errors, nobody left. At the end of eight innings, the Cubs 11, the Mets 2. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field would go in the ninth. Trout's first pitch hit on the ground. Ross Jones, the shortstop of the Mets, dribbles a ground ball for the first out. One away. Here's Hernandez, who has two of the five hits. Thirteen guys have hit ground balls today. He struck out four with a line drive in the infield. Eighteen putouts in the infield. Steve Trout at his best. Here's Hernandez, and the pitch is low. This will be the first complete game of the year. They hear from Montgomery, Illinois. There's a shot to center. Another hit for Hernandez. Boy, oh boy, he's four out of four against a left-handed pitcher. Being a left-handed hitter. Does show you about the platoon system, right, Steve? When you've got a guy with the lifetime statistic of Hernandez, it really doesn't matter much. He was a co-MVP along with Willie Stargell in 1979, so Hernandez always could hit well. There now is Foster in a homer with a man out on the seventh. Ball game in the top of the ninth. The Cubs about to make their home opener for 1984. A rousing success. Line drive, right field, Mel Hall back, back. Oh, he makes a sensational catch. Boy, what a play by Mel Hall. That ball was hit over his head. How he held on, I don't know. Let's watch it again. You won't see many better than this. Watch Mel Hall get a great break on this vicious line drive by George Foster. He's off with the crack of the bat. He hauls it in and then does a sprawling dive on the track. Wow. A phenomenal play. From another angle. Good concentration on the part of Hall. And he took a triple away from Foster. What a play. Great, great camera work too, Arnie. Listen to the crowd on his feet. The final out the opening day. Strawberry takes a fastball low. Trout has pitched a six hitter. Four of the six hits by Keith Hernandez. High pop foul back. Boy, Strawberry had a good pitch to hit. But he didn't get it. Fouled it off. A ball and a strike. Steve Trout going for it. He's pitched an outstanding ball game. Two balls and a strike. Just missed with a slider ball three. Three balls and a strike. Strike, a good fastball. 
They're watching down in Sun City Center, Florida. The crowd on his feet. Three balls, two strikes. Strawberry, the hitter. The pitch. Ground ball hits Stroud, bouncing away. Sandberg throws, but not in time. It's a base hit. And we'll have to go through that same crescendo of excitement. Tony Garofalo is coming out now to have a word with Steve Trout. The ball bounds off his body. He just can't get the glove up in time, and Sandberg almost throws Strawberry out at first. Now Tony Garofalo walks back. Trout is okay, and he wants this complete game. So Strawberry gets the seventh hit of the day. And five of them have been by the only two left-hand hitters in our lineup. Four by Hernandez, and now that infield hit by Strawberry. Here's Mookie Wilson. Swung, and he fouled it off. One strike and nothing. Eleven to two Cubs. Trout is still throwing hard. His fastball has been alive. There's a good looking Mookie Wilson. Ground ball, Boa. Cubs win. Cubs win. Listen to the crowd. And everybody enjoyed this one. From Stanton Cook, head of the Tribune Company, through the ranks of Andy McKenna, Jim Donald, Dallas Green, Jim Fry, probably above all. Dallas has put this ball club together, and Jim has certainly known what to do with it. And this is a happy day for that young man, believe you me. Final score, the Cubs do it all as they wall up the Mets 11-2, ending their six-game winning streak. We'll be back in a moment. Harry Carey and Steve Stone were back at Wrigley Field. I don't know how you could have a more perfect opener in this one because the Cubs did it all today. Power, pitching, defense, base running. You couldn't, uh, there's no way you could uh, offer a script that would beat this one. Well, Harry, 34,000 fans came out here today, and what they were looking for was excitement. And what they got was the Cubs pounding the ball all over the lot. The thing I was impressed with was the fact that Jim Fry was running with everybody, including Ron Say, and that had to surprise everybody in the ballpark. But when you can run like that and get the power that we have, you know the offense is going to come around, and Steve Trout gave the whole ball club a big lift because he threw just like he did in spring training. He kept everything down, did not walk a hitter, a seven-hitter, Harry. It was a magnificent performance. Especially when you realize that four of the seven hits were by one man, Keith Hernandez. He was four out of four, and he was one of only two left-handed batters in their lineup. So I think it dispels the myth of the platoon system because here's the left-handed batter, Keith Hernandez, getting four of the seven hits against a hard-throwing left-hander, Steve Trout. Well, three hours ago when we started this one, the big story was Dwight Gooden, the 19-year-old fireballer out of Tampa, Florida. Now after we end it, the big story is Steve Trout because Dwight Gooden had a tough ball game. He gave up six runs. He had a little bit of bad luck early in the game, but the Cubs continue to stay on top of him, and Trout was up to the task. You know, uh, when you see a ball club perform, as the Cubs did here today, you know that the potentiality is there. Now, nobody's going to say because you won your home opener, you're going to win the world championship. But you can see the pieces falling together. The pieces between defense and offense, between alertness and uh, uh, stodginess. This is a ball club that was ready to play, was mentally prepared to play, and you could see the Jim Fry, their manager, by virtue of having been with the Mets, knew exactly what you could do against them. 
he knew that you could steal, he knew that you could run, and he had his team do the things that he knew they could be successful at. Well, you know, Harry, everybody knows that we have an old ballpark here in Wrigley, but one thing they don't know, and I wish they could see, was the new facilities that the Cubs provided for the ball club. They have a beautiful, brand new clubhouse, and I think when the players went in there today and they saw what the Cubs did for them, the fact that they tried to make them as comfortable as possible, it had to give them a big lift. The old clubhouse was under the stands in left field. The new clubhouse is under the dugout. It's a beautiful clubhouse. It really is. It's, uh, it's something that anybody can be proud of, and uh, certainly that includes the players because they have the most comfortable surroundings that you could uh, possibly conceive of that any sports team might have. Uh, a real good point to bring up. All right, we, here is the game-winning hit of the day in the very first inning with one out of, and Sandberg in scoring position. Here is how Gary Matthews gets credit. And you're going to hear from Gary in the 10th inning show, but let's see his game-winning hit first. All right, we'll see him later. Okay, Steve, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> okay, Harry, I'll be here. This is fun. All right, the totals again quickly. The 11 runs, 14 hits, no errors for the Cubs. The winner is Trout. The first complete game pitch this year. He's now one and one. Two runs, seven hits, and no errors. For the Mets, the loser is Dwight Gooden. His record is also evened out at one and one. With Steve Stone, Harry Carey from a very happy Wrigley Field. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Hope you enjoyed it all. So long, everybody.